Good evening and welcome to Evening Prayer for Friday, October the 30th. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense. The lifting up of my hands is the evening sacrifice. Joyous light of glory of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ, we have come to the setting of the sun and we look to the evening light. We sing to God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy of being praised with pure voices forever. O Son of God, O giver of life, the universe proclaims your glory. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. Praise to you, O Christ. O come, let us worship him. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for the evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our constant companion on the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope among us, that we may recognize you as you are revealed in the scriptures and in the breaking of the bread. Grant this for your name's sake. Amen. For we are brought to an end by your anger. By your wrath we are dismayed. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. For all our days pass away under your wrath. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. The years of our life are seventy, or even by reason of strength eighty. Yet their span is but toil and trouble. They are soon gone, and we fly away. Who considers the power of your anger, and your wrath according to the fear of you? So teach us to number our days, that we may get a heart of wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long? Have pity on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, and for as many years as we have seen evil. Let your work be shown to your servants, and your glorious power to their children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us, and establish the work of our hands upon us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Our New Testament reading tonight is from Matthew chapter 20. Jesus said, For the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard, and going out about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And to them he said, You go into the vineyard too, and whatever is right I will give you. So they went. Going out again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour, he did the same. At about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing, and he said to them, Why do you stand here all idle? Why do you stand here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You go into the vineyard too. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last up to the first. And when those hired about the eleventh hour came, each of them received a denarius. Now when those hired first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received a denarius. And on receiving it, they grumbled at the master of the house, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day in the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last worker as I gave to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge my generosity? So the last will be first, and the first last. <coughs> Excuse me. And tonight's devotion, first devotion with Luther, uh, is called Praying with Confidence, based on Luke 11, 9. So I tell you, ask and you will receive, search and you will find, knock and the door will be opened to you. Praying with Confidence A good prayer that is heard by God has two prerequisites. First, we must consider God's promise that he will hear us. By reminding him of his promise, we can dare to pray confidently. For if God hadn't asked us to pray and hadn't promised to hear us, then all people praying their requests together wouldn't be able to receive even the smallest item. So no one receives anything from God because of the quality of the prayer, but only because of God's goodness. 
God anticipates all our requests and desires. With his promise, he prompts us to pray and desire these things so that we will learn how much he cares for us. He cares for us so much that he is prepared to give us even more than we are ready to receive or to ask for. Because he is offering us so much, we can pray with confidence. Second, we must not doubt what the true and faithful God promises to do. He promises to hear our prayers. Yes, he even commands us to pray. He promises this so that we might firmly believe that our prayers will be answered. As Christ says, that's why I tell you to have faith that you have already received whatever you pray for, and it will be yours. Mark 11.24, Matthew 21.22 Christ also says, So I tell you to ask, and you will receive. Search, and you will knock. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. Everyone who asks will receive. The one who searches will find. And for the person who knocks, the door will be opened. Luke 11, 9 and 10. By trusting in these promises and obeying these commands, we can pray with confidence. Join in the Apostles' Creed in the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, true God and true man, we thank you that you have redeemed us poor and condemned creatures, not by any of our works, merit, or worthiness, but by your holy suffering, death, and shedding of blood. O Lord, your suffering was great, your torment was heavy. We cannot comprehend how many your stripes, how deep your wounds, or the bitterness and painfulness of your death. How inexpressible is your love that reconciled us to your heavenly Father. In great fear of death, you sweat blood on the Mount of Olives, drops of blood that fell upon the earth, and there abandoned by all your disciples. You willingly gave yourself into the hands of those who led you mercilessly, bound hard and cruel, from one unjust judge to another. You were falsely accused and condemned, spit upon, scoffed at, and struck in the face with fists. For the sake of our misdeeds, you were hit, whipped, crowned with thorns, and treated wretchedly, like a worm and not a man. You were despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, so that even a heathen heart took pity and said, Behold the man. For the sake of our sin, you were counted a sinner and hung up between two evildoers as a curse. You were pierced in hands and feet with nails, and in your highest thirst you were given vinegar and gall to drink. Finally, in great pain, you gave up your spirit, so that you could pay our debts and we could be healed by your wounds. O Lord Jesus Christ, for this and all your other suffering and pain we give you thanks and praise. We pray you, let your holy, bitter suffering and death not be lost on us, but grant that at all times this may be our comfort, and that we may boast in it, and that as we ponder it, all evil desire in us may be snuffed out and subdued, and all virtue may be implanted and increased, so that we, having died to sin, may live in righteousness, following the example you have left us, walking in your footsteps, enduring evil with patience, and suffering injustice with a good conscience. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, since we cannot stand before you relying on anything we have done, help us trust in your abiding grace and live according to your word. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our shorter meditation tonight is based on Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 11, 
Then they sweep by like the wind and go on, guilty men whose own might is their God. Scattered like dust. That is what all ungodly tyrants do. They judge God's grace by temporal fortune or misfortune. They cannot imagine that their God and their cause are sheer, sheer deviltry because they note the success attending them in the misfortune besetting the gospel. But they do not know that the God and the cause of these same persecuted Christians are right and that God has given these Christians into their hands, just as he did Christ himself and all the saints. And so they also continue and proceed to blaspheme, saying, Now, where is your Christ? Have him help you. However, they will come to an ugly end. Now that they have sown their honey, a very sharp mustard will grow up. For since they do not fear God in his judgments and works and do not humble themselves, he lets them rush confidently along to ruin, attended abundantly by victory and good fortune, and makes fools of them in their smartness and smugness. Now they fill the measure of their sin now they fill the measure of their sins and become hardened until the hour strikes when he will send to them as he did to the Babylonians and the Jews and all such tyrants. For where are they now who said to Christ, Matthew twenty seven forty three, he trusts in God, let God deliver him now if he desires him. Where is their God to whom they ascribed their victory? Christ has remained, but they are dispersed and scattered like the dust of the field. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day, and I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good night.